welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Impius and I'm from the Oracle JDevelop and IDF product management team. In this session we talk about PSQL and it's the first of four sessions that deals on this topic. Before we look into the subject itself, let's see why customers look for using PSQL with Oracle IDF. There are two classical reasons. The first is that customers use store procedures to protect the direct table access. So that means that all DML operations will go through PLSQL packages. And the second one is where store procedure will be called for validation or for performing some sort of aggregation. Or the classical case, there is some data intensive work to do and this is encapsulated in a store procedure, so for a call straight to the store procedure. Well, if we look at motivation of customers to use PLSQL, then the first one, which is obvious, is because it feels natural. PLSQL is the language of the database, and it's a very strong language, a very powerful language. It seamlessly integrates with SQL, which also makes it a candidate for use, because SQL is what is the closest to what you can get to query the data. Then it's platform agnostic. Now, what does that mean? Well, I don't know if you changed the database from one operation system to the other, if you did so, then you would have recognized that all that it takes is just to install the database, get a dump out of the existing database on a platform one, and move it as an import to platform two. So there is no dependency to the operation system that your PLSQL routines have. In this regard, Java and PLSQL seems to be quite similar. And then, of course, customer might have a history in using PLSQL. A second reason for customers to use PLSQL with ADF is that they use it for security reasons. As you know, PLSQL, of course, well integrates with database security. And when we talk about security in one of the next recordings, one of the recommendations we give is to always consider database security when you plan for ADF security. So having, for instance, a PLSQL API to protect tab uh, database table access really makes sense from a security perspective. Same for the privileges that you can grant to a specific store procedure. So all of the concept in security like least privileged access are well managed with store procedures. And then data that you don't have to query out of the database just to perform some computation on the middleware um, cannot be stolen on transit, right? So if data that resides in the database is operated in the database, then it's considerably safe. A third reason and a third motivation for customers to use PLSQL is legacy. Customers, especially those that are long-time customers with Oracle, they do have a lot of investment in PLSQL. They used Oracle Forms in the past or built some sort of application with PLSQL directly or maybe using APEC. And though it would be unfair to call those applications legacy, at least they will be influencing in the past the infrastructure that customers have. And Keep in mind, not many businesses really start from a green field, so they do have some existing systems that require integration into ADF. Now, ADF obviously is a new kit on the block, so that means how can we leverage the existing PLSQL based systems from within Oracle IDF? We had the discussion also when we taught this training in class, where we say, okay, if you wanted to build a new ADF application, would you consider PLSQL to be a valid option? IDF is a Java framework. Yeah, so it's not a container SQL that you use just to maintain your PLSQL skills. However, if I build a Java E application, um, is it fair enough to build new PLSQL procedures and functions to use? Despite of the fact that I know how difficult that is to, for instance, to get the transaction right and all of the um, data type conversion I would have to do, would it be just considered to be a feasible option to consider into your application design. Well, the outcome of all the discussions we had with the course was yes, because if there is data-centric work to do, why do you want to pull the data out for the various reasons I mentioned on the previous slides, security or even just data not being stolen on transit or just not to have to push all of the data from the database to the middle tier just to put to uh, some average computation or summary computation or whatever. So yes, it's a fair approach still to use. However, as 
you get more and more familiar with ADF, you will see that there's a lot of advantages in service-oriented architecture technologies like BPM or BPL and in Java to rewrite some of this stuff. So for the time being, where for instance you're on transition from a pure SQL based system to an ADF system, you might have to keep pure SQL or you even decide to keep both systems in parallel. So you're not getting rid of your pure SQL. So this all kind of makes it required even for new ADF applications to still build new pure SQL functions. So if we agreed on all of what I've said so far, that there is a need to use pure SQL and that Java developers shouldn't be too defensive when it comes to pure SQL, we need to see how it's best to integrate pure SQL calls within Oracle IDF applications. One option, and this is what we're suggesting in this session and in the three follow-up recordings, would be to actually look into abstracting your existing pure SQL infrastructure. I mentioned already that there's a data type mismatch, and no matter how good JDBC is doing the job of allowing you to transform the database type to a Java type, still you will always have the problem where the stored procedures were not developed with JavaScript or with Java uh, in mind. Yeah? So with Java in mind, of course, some of the signatures of your stored procedures or some of the technologies that you use with PL SQL would have been chosen differently. However, when you build the PL SQL function, and still you may plan to do that, then what you want to do is you want to build it as the best that the database provides you. Now, however, this could cause some incompatibilities with access from Java. So instead of changing your existing PL SQL routines that you built in the past or maybe built in the future, and that maybe different clients will use, because remember, again, coming from a security perspective, if you have a stored procedure that is accessed from different clients to update the database tables, then it's consistent for all the clients. Again, when we talk about security, we talk about the weakest link. Now, if you harden an ADF application so that all access through ADF will be validated and security um, performed, but then you have access from, say, a database adapter coming from a SOA suite, and if that path is not protected on the same level, you have a weak link. So stored procedures could help here. So you don't want to change the pre SQL signature. So what we recommend instead is, if that is a possible solution for you, to create an additional layer, to create a pure SQL abstraction just for the specific application you deal with. So you're building your Oracle IDF application and you know the IDF application will have to access stored procedures. Well, try to understand what IDF can do in terms of accessing pure SQL, what Java can do, and then what is the gap that you have to bridge between your existing pure SQL packages and actually the Java access that you're programming in Oracle IDF. And this gap actually is what you put into your pure SQL procedure. So you create a pure SQL package that sits as an application layer on top of your existing infrastructure and then you use this as a transformation layer between what you have and then what you want to access through ADF. The next slides will show you where the advantages are because now this opens up your infrastructure for all kind of clients and all kind of possibilities that we'll introduce on the next slides and for this I will zoom in. So let's have a look at this slide here uh, and you can see we have our application specific PL SQL abstraction in front of the PL SQL packages that we built for the table access. So no matter what the infrastructure is we can just talk to this kind of proxy here. Well one of the clients that you want to run against your PL SQL packages might be Oracle Forms. Remember that Oracle Forms could be built to access stored procedures and it was recommended as best practices because in client server it made really no sense to query thousands of data to the client to the desktop and then just perform some calculation just to dismiss the values of the data then yeah so basically here the recommendation was if you put your forms data block on a stored procedure you gain performance and of course complex computation in the database would have been easy to share. However, in Oracle Forms we mandate you to use a specific PL SQL um, procedure signature. So you couldn't just write a vanilla signature and then Oracle Forms could work with this out of the box. So here's where we actually required you to have a specific API on the PL SQL side. Either this is the PL SQL API that you now want to access from ADF or maybe even had created in the past 
an application abstraction layer similar to what we recommend now for IDF. So Oracle Forms can pass on to PSQL stored procedure if they have the right signature. So that's one of the clients that we're dealing with. Another client, of course, is ADF. Now ADF, as it's a framework, will use Java to access to the database, and it does so through the business service, so its model, so to say. Now the Java access, no matter how you code it, in the end will go through JDBC. And the JDBC knows about how to create a prepared statement to invoke stored procedures or function. It knows how to deal with the in parameters and with the output parameters. So that's not a big deal. So one of the access options that you have is just a native Java access if this is through Toplink, EJB, or if this is through a POJO where you manually handle the uh, Java, Java database connectivity. That's all up to you. However, there is a second option to expose your data through stored procedures once you have this application specific PSQL layer in place and that is basically as a service. So you can expose stored procedure on the database as a SOAP service or REST service. I'm not going into detail about what type of services these are and what they're doing. We have a separate session on this one and you might just go a few recordings um, back which we released before this recording here and you hear me talking about RESTful services and SOAP services. SOAP services is something that you can expose, I think, through Toplink. And RESTful services, my understanding is uh, what Apex will give you an opportunity for. However, once you have a service exposure of the PLSQL routines or more the functionality and the data um, they provide, then you have three options. Well, one is the native Java access. And the second option is the web service layer access. And this has two options, one for the REST service access and one for the SOAP service access. So you see you're opening up great to different clients than just Oracle Forms or the PLSQL API. What you also see is that if we add another client, which is not on the screen here, but you know, just imagine it was there, SOA. Yeah, SOA is all service-based. Now, if you want to use some of the functionality in the database in SOA, then exposing this functionality that you have in the database as a service makes it available for BPL or for BBM. And so you can use it with this SOA client as well. So it's opening up your whole legacy infrastructure to a complete brand new world of opportunities. In our ADF case, however, we would have, say, an ADF business components model, which typically is what this training will deal with and what Fusion Oracle, Oracle Fusion Ops is using, or many, many of our customers use as well. So ADF Business Components now has three options to access legacy data um, exposed in stored procedures. One is to go straight, which is kind of your native Java access, just through a programmatic view object and an entity object, or just through a call from a managed bean through the binding layer, and we cover how that all will work in a later session. Or ADF Business Components can hook onto a RESTful service or a SOAP service, and this is explained in a different session that we recorded to this one. So this is our basically architecture in which you as a developer now can move and see what would make the most sense for your application that you have to build with ADF, and maybe integrating service-oriented architecture as well. So that was it. That was our first introduction to PLC core integration with Oracle IDF. Now, we have a fair good idea now about the architecture that we're looking at and the possibilities that we have. In the continuation of this PLSQL integration talk, we will look into a specific integration, which is first looking into how can we get DML operations directly sit on top of a stored procedure, no matter if it's an application-specific package or one of your existing packages. And then in a third recording, we'll look into how do we query from a stored procedure and expose it through a view object. And you see we're focusing on ADF business components. And I think it's fair enough to do because the same opportunities you find in ADF business components you will find in Toplink as well, which means that you can use it with EJB as a model and POJO as well. You will have to write similar access pattern yourself. However, as all comes down to JDBC, it's all kind of in the end a prepared statement that you send to the database and data you query back. The last session then that we record on PLC core integration is about best practices and access 
of stored procedure through managed pain and method call activities and route activities. So whatever comes from the client side directly. <music>